I'm super excited to welcome the very beautiful Jen McCarty today. And Jen has an amazing YouTube channel called Jen McCarty Cosmic Gypsy. And she has a you know, pretty huge following <laughs> in, uh, from around the world, really. And I, I'm really drawn to you, Jen, and your work because you're very much um, a proponent of the divine feminine. Yeah. Of, of rebalancing yeah. the divine feminine on the planet and also you know you're, you've got a great focus on um twin souls and, and you know mass the mastery of you know twin souls so you know we will um leave links as well for all your work and, and I know you've got a course coming up so we'll tell everyone about that too but um I'm also the other thing that I really love about what, what you've been doing is you've you've had a great um interest and 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 focus and and I guess um, compassion for Australia as well. You, you've obviously got a you know strong link there to Australia, and um, as well as you know general current affairs, and 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 you bring through you know higher information that's that's really fascinating. And um, you know we, we're wanting to be able to connect to to the truth at the moment, and so we want to bypass all the um, noise. <laughs> And go straight to the good stuff and so your your channel is is a wonderful clear channel and it's going to be wonderful to be able to talk to you about that and, and what information you're getting through so super big welcome beautiful to have you here and um um you're an english rose <laughs> we welcome you <laughs> so i am <laughs> So um, I guess I'm going to start by just giving people a little bit of background about your, um, you know, your life and what brought you to this point. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Okay, sure. So I had a very, very powerful spiritual awakening when I was 21 and I'm now 48. So that was like 27 years ago. And uh, it was on top of a mountain in the Himalayas near Mount Kailash. And I was chanting the mantra Om Namah Shivaya. And I walked up to the top of the mountain and I had this experience where I got to the top of the mountain and my third eye blasted open. And in that moment, I kind of like, I, I sort of like had perceived myself as an individualized drop of water. And I really had bought into the whole kind of like ego separation thing. And that in that moment, it was like that drop of water returned home to the ocean. And I understood my whole, my consciousness merged with the whole, with the whole, with the whole entire ocean. And and then I went into Christ consciousness. I went into God consciousness. I understood deeply and implicitly about oneness, about, about God, about creation, about eternity, about infinity and all these like words that I didn't have a clue what they really meant sort of thing. I suddenly became a sort of oracle or I came I became very very deeply I just knew what it meant I finally knew what love was I, I knew I loved my mum but that was all I knew about love really I didn't know about love as an existential force of creation do you know what I mean yes um and and, and eternity again eternity was just like saying oh do you want a cup of tea like I didn't it, it didn't register to me as a thing you know but in that experience it was like I, I understood deeply like the penny dropped do you know what I mean yes, about absolutely that, yeah. absolutely yeah it, it's very interesting because Lately, I've been giving people the technique of going to the top of a mountain, um, like a Tibetan mountain, you know, in Himalaya, and looking down in, in a valley at, at, at like the world going on around them, below them. And so they've got this eagle eye view, but they're not in attachment and, and they're sort of able to look at it objectively, but not get caught up in all the emotions of it and everything like that. And it sounds exactly what you, you did to have your, um, you know, epiphany and your um, sort of um, a, a, a true, true awakening to, 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 to uh, the, the uh, broader consciousness. So isn't that funny that, that that's a real <laughs> parallel that I've been telling people to do? Yeah. You know, it, it, it is about not attaching too much emotionally to everything going on or, or you'd just be a wreck at the moment with yeah, you know, yeah. everything happening. So, yeah, yeah that, that's a very interesting synchronicity. So um, yeah. now what with with that pathway that led you to this point and that and that was a moment, I guess, and and um, that, that, that you can, you know, clarify as being the moment, um, what, what did it, galvanize you to do in terms of your direction in terms in terms of your divine soul mission what did you do from that point onwards because you know I think that that's a great template for people to follow you know when they when they get activated how, how do we do that and, and what did you do after that well I I um 
in my own consciousness, I became at the level of an elder, of a spiritual elder. So I had that galactic overview of um, the different dimensional realities. And, and because I, I, I hold such a high level of consciousness, then I was put in the role of an elder as a protector, sort of angelic in a way, like a kind of like an ascended angelic, you could say. And so that was my experience. And so I was doing, I, I, I'd be doing a lot of work, a lot of planetary work a lot of grid work um and also really just holding that masterful vibration um but also what happened to me in my experience was I, I became very very psychic like next level psychic and so every time I met someone I would just get downloads I'll be able to read them instantly on a soul level and I will be able to pick up like I, I basically had access and do have access to the Akashic records and so I would meet someone and just by hearing their voice or just checking out their aura I'd be able to pull through their their most um, potent spiritual gifts of this lifetime their most potent um, like issues that they've come here to clear or their blocks you could say and um, I just became totally and I am completely and utterly psychic like I read people from a soul level so my eyes aren't really particularly calibrated to 3D, if you like. Sure. My perception is calibrated to a higher dimensional awareness. So it's every time I'm... Yeah. Do you think yeah, it's 5D? Yeah. yeah, higher dimensional awareness. I mean, and so whenever people come into my field, I perceive them from a soul perspective. Yes. And so I can give a lot of information about, about stuff that they aren't aware of. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, so that's how I, I, I kind of, you know, it was just, it was just an automatic thing. I just became completely nightly psychic. And, um, but I, I'm like, I followed the path of a very typical Blu-ray. And so with, as, as a Blu-ray, we're very, very powerful and we're very, very mystical. Mm. And we're very plugged into the mystical realms, but yes. we, we, we're not about the limelight. Like we, we just want to just get on with the job and just get it done without any sort of, you know, fanfare or anything like that. And I had a huge amount of resistance, even though I knew I'd had this massive spiritual experience and I was being being primed for to have take a public figure pay, public role mm -hmm. I had a huge amount of resistance to that because I never ever because 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 I went into God consciousness every person that I meet I was like oh my god oh my god I see the divine in you I see the divine in you I'm gonna put on you and so I, I was that it all just flipped like this whole guru thing just totally flipped do you know what I mean and yes, so yes, yes. I I was just able to, so, so I didn't ever want that role. I never, ever wanted to be perceived as separate or special or anything yes. like that. I was yes. like, you're so special. You're so special. No, no, no. You're <laughs> special. I, I can relate to that too. And also the, the activation that's happening because of everything that's going on at the moment in the world, you know, we, we see everything and, and, and we want to shift the paradigm into, into a better world. So you, you just automatically want to do everything that you can. And, and this just happens to be one of the, um, pathways to being able to ma make, make a difference in that way yeah definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah so I, I became a fashion designer and um, I got in with the wrong crowd to be honest with you like fake fake butterflies and um, that eventually that kind of like brought me out of my alignment and and then I had to have another enlightenment experience another kundalini awakening when I was 20 when I was uh, 40 just before my 40th birthday and um and that's when I, I then say, then I had, I experienced the ascension of my soul, the ascension of my consciousness. And yeah. I, I basically merged with my twin flame on the higher planes. And um, I experienced the Heros Gamos, which is, which is basically the real, real solid Kundalini awakening where your masculine and feminine serpents at the base of your spine awaken and then they merge and then they they ascend up your spine and so with that experience I'd already had one kundalini awakening and it was like the first kundalini awakening was the like dress rehearsal or, or the sort of like the preparation so I so I purged because with the kundalini awakening it's all about like purging all the programs purging all the blocks in the chakras and stuff like that so yeah. I'd already done that from yeah. from being 21 so by the time I had my second one it was just like there was like no resistance and, it, and I and I just went and, and how and did I, you activate yeah. that second one was there a particular I, I, way that you did that yeah 
Yeah, I found a spiritual practice. I found because I knew, you know, I, I I never, ever, ever had a teacher. I never had a mentor on my path because every time someone says, oh yeah, this person's enlightened. And then I was like, they're not enlightened. They're not enlightened. I could just like tell they're not enlightened. Do you know what I mean? And I, I have a very, very sensitive radar to like ego. And, and, and so I never, ever met anyone that, that could kind of like, you know, got help, help me in any way. I was very, very young when I had this like, that experience, but I just never had anyone. But finally, when I was in 2012, I met I met a truly enlightened woman, and um, she had brought through this. Um, well, she had adapted a 6,000 year um, uh, meditation practice, and I committed to this practice. And I I didn't meet her in person, but I really connected with her in 5D, and so she became my 5D mentor. To be honest with you. And, um, and I committed to that practice. So because I was at a very, very high level anyway, I just needed a little, little tweak, a little yeah. commitment to a spiritual practice. And then that was it. I was like, boom, ascension. Thank so, you. yeah. Wow. Well, we've got a lot in common because I'm a Blu-ray as well. And um, I also read energy fields and souls. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's really common with Blu-rays. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's lovely. Probably what, what, what we've got a lovely, um, I feel like we've got lovely resonance. Um, so beautiful, Jen. My, my question to you is um, at the moment with everything going on in the world and, and in Australia, um, you, you've been bringing through a lot of information about Australia. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on the current um, situation here? You've shared some fascinating insights about, you know, from a higher metaphysical perspective about what's going on here. You know, there, there is a lot of, they say, um, karmic cellular trauma or wounding within um, the um sort of the land and, and, and the um, consciousness of Australia. And that's also why there's a lot of darkness or a lot of um, heaviness that, that the world can see that's, that's being highlighted now in Australia because we also do have that um, soul memory trauma here. So we're transmuting that. And yeah. um, we're also a, a, like a zero point um, ground uh, zero <laughs> type energy for the rest of the world here in Australia with what we birth here will then emanate to the rest of the world. So um, what are your thoughts in terms of what's happening in Australia now? And um, yeah, I think people really also want more information on this and they and they also want to have more hope too because you know we see what's happening with the original people in the northern territory and it, it's quite horrifying you know and we want to do everything we can to shift that um so yeah what are your thoughts jen um so my son's dad lives in australia and my son's two siblings live in australia um, I went to Australia um, a few years ago and I, I felt the trauma of the land so deeply and I actually didn't feel comfortable because everyone's like, oh, Australia, it's the best place on earth. And everyone in England's like, oh, Australia, Australia. And I got there and I was like, I'm not feeling it, guys. I'm uh, not feeling it. <laughs> I know what and, you mean. I know what you mean. And then, and so I just, I got there and I felt like I could just hear the trauma in the land mm. and I could hear the trauma in the water. Mm. And so I just kept on doing ceremonies. Like I was with my son and he was really young. And I, like, I just remember like going, come with him, we're going into the ocean. And we just did this ceremony and we were like, sorry, we were just saying sorry mm. on behalf of all of our ancestors. Yes, so, like Ho'oponopono even, you know, that... Sort of, yeah. yeah, 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 and asking for forgiveness and like really, really working with the energies of, of the land. So, mm -hmm. I didn't really connect with Australia at during my time there, but since everything that's been going on, I must admit, I do feel almost Australian. I know that sounds really, really weird, but I feel like I'm connected to the national identity of Australia. And I'm like, going, what is going on with this? Because I, it's just suddenly just, this is what's going on. So I imagine that I have had many lifetimes on that land. Yes. I believe I've had lifetimes as an Aboriginal on that land, absolutely. probably as a Western settler as well because it, it's absolutely unprecedented my my connection with especially the people yes beautiful beautiful so sorry keep going <laughs> oh, okay so yeah so what I um what I am observing is that 
you know, there's, there's, uh, Australia has a massive shadow, you know, mm. an unaddressed shadow. Yes. And that is, yeah, that is the way the original people have been dealt with, um, you know, mm. and there hasn't really been any reparations that really, really proper, true reparations for the Aboriginal. And, and I don't mean material reparations, that's bullshit. Mm. I mean, spiritual emotional reparations yes. from, from the people mm. i mean there probably has but they're nothing really really significant like big big enough and not the re recognition of, yeah, that's right. it. yeah 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 i mean it has to shift that's right that's true you know even the recognition of the uh, dna um pure uh, dna ancestral lineage that that contributes uh, to, to to humanity because we they hold um, the secrets of of all ancestral lines within their DNA. You know, just the acknowledgement, respect of you know all that aspect as well, and all the all the um, amazing um, you know uh, uh, information about their at the law, their ancestry, their their song lines. You know, all all that sort of thing as well. Um, yeah, I. I, f I feel that w w when you say that you feel the trauma in the land, I, I was going to connect with you like um, about a year ago and I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> and then I was actually based in Victoria and, um, um, you know, where DA is, who, who you've mentioned mm -hmm. a few times, and um, I, I felt very, very oppressive, the energy there. It was really sort of there's a density and a heaviness there. And I and, and just down the road there was a, um, a young lady that was, pregnant and she'd done a Facebook post about some you know minor gathering or something and the police stormed into her house and in front of her children and arrested and she was in her pajamas and everything so you know I it, it, it didn't make me feel very um comfortable to do sort of uh big interviews at that particular moment so I I sort of uh, postponed it and then, you know, I've just got back together to, to be able to connect with you now. But I've, I've been doing things um, since I moved because I moved um, a few months after that to New South Wales. But Victoria, to me, um, just had this incredibly oppressive energy and it took me ages to just clear myself from, from that when I moved up north um, and just to, to lighten my energy and just release a lot of that density. I'm just getting a really strong download that I think it's almost like we need to create a viral campaign of awake Australians who are doing the work of the land, the, yes. the work of that land that, that needs to be done. And that is acknowledging all the trauma, acknowledging all the, the abuse, saying sorry and really, really deeply meaning it from our hearts mm -hmm. and then working together as a human community. Actually, I'm so doing that. I'm doing that, actually, Jen. I have a, I have a Soul Healing for Australia group on Tuesday nights and we do the energy work and, and, and we're doing um, healing uh, energetically. So um, we, we are striving to, to create um, a shift with that. And there's a lot of people on board. I'm going to do that for this for the 21st of December transmission. I'm going to do a healing of the land. I, I'll have loads of people signing up for that. And we'll do a big Australia clearing because we did Uluru last year with the black box. And then we're going to, so I think we're going to do Australia again on the 21st. Oh, brilliant. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic, Jen. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's really, really important. That's right, this focus on Australia at the moment. And, again, it's not just for Australian people. It's for, it's for the world. So, yeah. so um, the, uh, the particular practices that you're talking about energetically, you know, we, we can say sorry and we can um, work with the water. Um, yes. Is there anything else specifically that we can give people ideas about to, to shift? And especially, you know, with, with what's happening with the original people at the moment, you know, um, we can send them um, love and light and protection, you know, ask Archangel Michael to surround them with protection and things. But, you know... Um, it, I'll, I'll say something. That's not quite enough. It's right not. Now. It's not. That's no. what I'm saying. Yeah. Then, yeah. Men of Australia need to grow their balls and mm. they need to go to the Northern Territory mm. and they need to protect the elders. And, yes. and there, there's no two ways about it. Mm. Like, this is, there's no time to be lazy now. No. Like, the, the, 
this is an, a blatant attack on humanity, on our DNA. Yeah. And what what we can't go over there. I can't get on a flight and go to Australia and start protecting them. You guys are on that land. Yeah. You need to come together and you need to get over to the Northern Territories and you need to show them that you are protecting the, the, the Aboriginal people. Yes, yes. You know? And then the Aboriginal people need to see that, that, yes. the, the, you know, that the settlers, whatever they're called, I don't know what you call them, but do you know what I mean? But the, the, you actually like give a shit and, and yes. that you are actually intervening. Like this is going to heal the land mm. so deeply just cut by going oh yeah well you know our elders are all just getting destroyed and we'll just pray to archangel michael that's not cutting it right now no no that's, that, that's what i'm saying we, we need to be more active absolutely i totally agree with you and the other point is the other reason why they're doing this is because the it is within the capacity of the uh, original people to actually change the sovereignty here because they they have access to be able to do that because of their claim to the land um, being here and so they're trying to remove them so that it removes everyone else's ability to um, get rid of the current um, system as it's set up yeah absolutely yeah so yeah. people in australia you are on the front line of this you are on yeah. the front line of this global takeover like mm. you really really Oh, and so you got you need to come together and it's like we need to create like human armies of protection you know that's right really that's right feel that mm. and, and so i'm going to focus on that for my prayers you know that these armies because there must be some truly philanthropic billionaires out there seeing what the globalists are doing and going i'm not up for it i've got the money i've got the resources let's let's start training up some people like to 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 deal with this Tyranny. I've got some connections that would love that. So if anyone's out there listening who has that ability, please contact me because I can put you in touch with some amazing people. So yeah. Yeah. Let's just hold that vision of yeah. of you know Australian people coming together, and you know, and it's hard to wake up in paradise. We all know that it's much harder to wake up when you've got your beautiful climate, you've got your great standard of living, you've got your fabulous beaches, you've got your. Do you know what I mean? Like we don't have that in the UK. It's, it's so grey. It's small. It's so it, you know. It's it's the not, not great. <laughs> it's not great. It's just, it's, it's, everyone's like packed on top of each other. Yeah. And so our conditions are a little bit kind of edgy. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But with you guys, you, it's all been laid on a plate for you, but that's been the yeah. plan. That's been the agenda. They're mm. like, oh, let's shut up the Aussies. We'll give them nice big swimming pools. We'll give, mm. them, we'll give them like, you know, really high quality of living. And then they won't, they won't bother arguing because their, their selfish needs will be, will be fulfilled. But it's like, we have now reached... As, as a humanity, that's we, we've gone beyond that point of m immaturity. We yeah. now need to understand that that is detrimental for all the future generations mm. for, for us to have that attitude. Yes. And yeah. Just to see but beyond yourself and to see uh, what, what, what everyone else is, um, what their needs are and to, and to have that service for others um, paradigm where if you're doing all right it's, it's not just about you it's it's about everyone what about the person down the road um, that's lying in the street at night time and I think that that is, that is an awakening that is taking place in Australia at the moment definitely I, I feel yeah. that yeah. The, the darkness mm. all of the control all of the mandates all of the issues that are going on yeah. this is darkness which is precipitating the light it's mm. precipitating the great awakening of humanity yes. it's precipitating people questioning now like the the, the you know the, the tyrannical ways of these so-called puppets leaders do you know what I mean yes well there, there's a new bill that you know that um that was absolutely uh it's ridiculous it's very very um can I say uh, oh, I've, got, I've got to watch my words. <laughs> it's very, very um, communist China, um, complete control, um, dystopian, you know, bill that's just come through in Victoria that's been passed. Of course, we, we, we thought it would be um, and, and it was some sort of hush hush way someone crossed the floor or something and the last minute went through or something and then the, and then they made a minor adjustment to try and placate the masses by saying oh you know we're going to make it a little bit more transparent you know but they still pushed it through so these are the things when you actually look at what that says that bill these are the things that hopefully will awaken more people when they realize that 
um, it's it's like going back into you know Nazi Germany in World War II, looking at that sort of um, re, uh, bill that's been passed in Victoria. So um, that just happened yesterday as well. I know. I'm fo- I follow all the news with what's going yeah. on. Yeah. I, can't t- I don't think you can tell me anything new about what's going on with the world. No. <laughs> That's all I do. I just absorb. Uh, like I'm very Australian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm, yeah, I really am. I really am. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, I, I'm wondering, um, in in terms of where we are right now, um, how. You know, the, the, a lot of people are forecasting a, a battle ahead, you know, particularly in Australia, a battle between, you know, we, we're already in it, but it, it seems to be exacerbating and intensifying. How, how do you see this um, potential um, um, Playing out. loggerheads between the dark and the light and this sort of final intensive um, interchange happening? How long do you feel that that will go for? Do you think it's going to get much more intense. I feel personally um, on the ground here in uh, New South Wales that it looks like it's going to get that way. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Jen? Um, my thoughts are that we are going through an individual and collective initiation process. We are evolving from being 3D beings to being higher dimensional beings. And that is happening on an individual level and it's happening on a collective level. And so what's going on in Australia at the moment is there's like, like there's a there's a groundswell, there's an organization that is taking place on the ground level with humanity. Humans are now coming together out of their little paradise, little pods, and they're saying, shit, man, we have to address what's going on because we've got the mafia running the show and we need, we need a plan. And so what I see is happening is that Humanity is beginning to organize itself and become empowered. We're becoming empowered on an individual level and we're becoming empowered collectively. Mm. We're waking up to the fact that we've all been born into a world where, you know, these these governments have have kind of like said, oh, this is how things are. And we've grown up with parents that have just like, well, this is just how things are. This is how just the world is. And, you know, child abuse happens. You know, the the elite, the elite abuse children like that's what goes on in the world. And I'm like, well, not on my watch. Not on my mm. watch, love. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't come here to be complicit in in a despicable system. Absolutely. I came here to um to bring the codes, to bring the true uh, angelic codes mm. back into this realm. So what's happening is is that we have to accept the fact that the government, it just hasn't worked. It just hasn't worked out for humanity the way that this structure has been set up. Mm. So we need to now focus on a new paradigm. Mm. That's what we need to be putting our energy into, creating new schools, new hospitals, new playgrounds, new allotments, new parks. We need to be building the new. We can't be waiting for the government to suddenly become enlightened and angelic. Never going to happen. No, no way. No. no. So we have to now come together and organize. But but you know, we've all been programmed to be very apathetic and very, very lazy. And we all just want to do our nine to five job, come home, have dinner, put the TV on, watch a bit of crap telly, and then go to bed and then repeat, rinse and repeat every single day. Yes, like, and we are set up that way so that people don't even have a moment to think for themselves where they, they don't have time to go inward and do any inner reflection because they're too busy trying to survive and bring in an income. I mean, the cost of living here in Australia is ridiculous. Um, and there's, I don't know how on earth young people could ever afford to buy a house now. It's just totally out of their um, capacity. And, you um, you know, I, I think it's all set up so that 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 people don't have haven't had that ability to be able to do that, and so we we need to um, change that and, and and actually do the opposite, which is make time to do that 
that that inner work and to envision you know the future that we want and and take steps forward like you're just saying to create that I'm part of a Oceana Restoration Council which is all about restoring this area and um, so that's going to be helping to build a new world um, and so yeah I think I think that's a great point that you're making there. Um, I think we need to really pray what we need to focus our prayers on is getting the police on humanity's side because they are the only thing that are standing between us and victory. Yes. They right. are the only thing. Yes. And so we need to pray. We need, we need like spiritual intervention here yes. so that these human, some of them are robots. I don't know what's happened to some of them, That's but that, that they, that they actually have an awakening. They have an epiphany and that they realize that they are creating a terrible world for their children and for their That's grandchildren right. and for their yeah. parents. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what, yeah. What, understand these people. I know, thinking, I know, I don't get it. What about that. your mum? What about your mum? Are you okay with your mum being yeah. like really potentially treated like this by, I by know, a police? I know, <laughs> I don't get it. It's just a mindset that they follow orders, but they don't actually think for themselves and, and, and realize the repercussions of their behavior and their actions of what it's actually doing. They just follow the orders and do what they're told. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, and there's like um, uh, the, the inner morality and the inner integrity of, of being able to have your own moral code of you know what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do it seems to be missing somehow with a lot of these people um is there a perhaps a um a little blessing or a prayer that you could say right now for everyone to do collectively for the police maybe particularly the police in in australia jen is that something you could do now you could say a prayer if you like that would be beautiful. I'd love that for, for the police particularly. And, and also, you know, in Australia would be fantastic. And um, my, my thoughts also go out to New Zealand at the moment as well. Yeah, so Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. So just bringing our hands in prayer position, I'd just like to call upon the higher self of all of the souls that have chosen the line of work that is known as being a police officer. I'll call upon your higher self now. May you all hear this call. May you all come forward to receive this powerful prayer, this powerful activation. We know that you are children of the divine. You are so precious. You are so loved. And we are all connected deeply as one beautiful, exquisite human family. It is so important that you understand that the role that you are playing is perpetuating hell on earth for everyone. And you have an individual responsibility to say no. I will not follow this rule. I will not follow this dictat. I will follow my heart. I will serve my brothers and sisters. I will look for ways to make their life more beautiful, more easeful, more abundant and more rich. I will work with my team to get rid of all forces on this world that seek to harm humanity. Giving thanks now for the higher level officers to experience their profound spiritual awakening those ones that can have the authority to sign those papers to to train certain people in certain modalities so just sending out a prayer now to the highest echelons of the police service in a Australia and New Zealand and all over the world in England in America and all over the world it is very very important now that God that all the angels and all the galactic beings that are working with us work specifically with you you need to wake up your third eye needs to blast open now and you need to remember the truth that if you cause harm to one soul, you are causing perpetual harm to yourself. You can only ever harm yourself as we are all one. And we ask now that the angelic realm send mirrors, beautiful, powerful mirrors to all of the police force so that they can see their reflection. They can see the actions that they are taking. We ask this now, we ask this to happen immediately with immediate effect. We stand in the vibration of positivity and miracles. And we give thanks mother, father, God for hearing this call and for proving to us 
that this prayer has been answered and so it is wow that was so so profound thank you jim that 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 is 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 incredibly needed at the moment and um just the energy that came through incredible um so so grateful thank you <laughs> yeah um, i think it's very important that people in australia you 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 have to hold the line and i've been talking a lot about this a lot what does that mean to hold the line mm -hmm. it means that you prioritize your spiritual well-being over <laughs> which is essentially present moment awareness. You find a practice to bring you to the present moment and you prioritize that over all worry, over all thoughts of the past or all thoughts of the future. Archie, come here. You prioritize present moment awareness and you understand that we live in a vibrational universe and everything that you visualize, you are creating on a higher subtle level. So if you sit there and worry about, about you know, this, that and the other, then you're, you're essentially magnetizing that into your field. It's much better for you to just be empty and to, and to pray and to hold that vision of, of the world that you want to live you are so freaking powerful every single one of us is so individually powerful and this is why all the, this nonsense is going on and so if you could just own it and claim your own individual power and hold the line you will become a lighthouse your lighthouse then will be able to provide stability spiritual stability for many many souls definitely i i think it's part of um acknowledging that our soul evolution is is the fundamental reason why we're here, we're, we're here to evolve as a soul and that collectively then helps humanity and, and everything else is just fluff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be kind. Be kind. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you, Jen. Well, um, I, I just wanted to um, finish by saying that you, you're running um, an amazing course and it's coming up. I think tomorrow you're you're starting it. Is that right? <laughs> so please, please yeah, tell hosting, everyone about that. <laughs> I'm hosting my first ever twin flame container tomorrow. It's going to be a three week process that's that finishes on the 21st of December, and it's going to be a very very deep immersion into the the kind of the deepest mysteries of the twin flame phenomena. The purpose of the um, container is to manifest physical union for everyone that comes. So that's the intention. That is the, the main primary focus of the um, container is physical union. But I have many many things coming up. I've got my 1212 transmission, um, which is all to do with the 12th dimension and activating our 144 strand DNA, which is connected to the 12 strand dna um this is gonna be very very powerful like yeah very powerful so we'll post the links to my transmission and then i've got um i'm hosting a um activate your spiritual business container in uh, on the 4th of January so that's for people because we all need to m move away now from the corporations we need yes. to move away from the federal from any sort of like wages coming from the federal system and we need to activate our entrepreneurial codes because there, there's a huge vast fortune to be made now because it's everything globally has been created for us so I'm doing a container to activate and initiate um, a group of souls into their spiritual successful spiritual business yes. so that's on the 4th 5th and 6th of um of uh january and then finally i'll say my last thing that i'm really really excited about it came through yesterday or the day before i'm going to be hosting a i think it's going to be a two-day container might be three and it's going to do to do with wealth and sexual ecstasy and how our sexual ecstasy codes are connected to wealth and abundance and so we're going to be really really clearing the channels for um to manifest great wealth and to clear the channel so that our ecstatic codes can flow very very freely so that is going to be on the I believe that's going to be on the 1st and 2nd of January. I think it's going to be a two-day container. So that's going to be uh, my, my you know, I, I do high-ticket events and I do low-ticket events and I do mid-ticket events. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a mid-ticket event. Yeah. So but it's going to be the same as a high-ticket event. I just got, I got the guidance. They were like, 
how you'd normally that would be a high ticket event make it a mid ticket event so everyone's going to get so much value from the uh, wealth and sexual ecstasy container that sounds amazing incredible you come. i would yeah yeah i'll, I'll definitely look yeah. into that yeah. definitely and right. I, i've also been asked um by someone to to put together like a symposium for, uh, for in Australia for activating the divine feminine and wondered oh. maybe if, if you could uh, in some way potentially contribute to that 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 would be wonderful I love, I love being part of divine feminine round tables and summits and I love me making new connections and I'm, I'm always in service I'm always in service to God 24 7 even when I'm sleeping I'm serving God yeah. so I'm, I'm there yeah I, I, I'm the same I've never been more busy in my life <laughs> Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Write me and um. Oh, yeah. thank you, Jen. That's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, it's been incredible chatting with you, and thank you so much. I know your time's incredibly busy as well, and um, I think that the things we talked about today are, are very, very pertinent right at this moment for people to hear. And I'm going to also put out that that prayer um, separately um, so that people can share that as well. And um, um really really grateful for you um taking the time to connect today jen and it's just lovely to to connect with your beautiful energy and you know the the fact that you know you have such great um avatar consciousness is 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 a blessing for the planet so thank you um beautiful to connect with you and hope to hope to be able to chat with you again soon <laughs> Oh, okay, because we, we have some beautiful communities popping up, you know, people wanting to activate them now, you know, so that people yeah. feel they're with like-minded, you know, communities and, and um, also it's safer and everything with, with the current environment. So, yeah. I would say one, one last thing to, to remind us all to plant vegetables. Yes. Yes. I'll, I'll add that in as well. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so important to be self-sufficient at this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Oh, so. thank you, Jen. Thank you. Okay, so lovely to see you. <laughs> you too. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.